Well, now Trish is here with me. We have lots and lots of viewer emails. Um, let's get straight to those questions. I mean, um, Isaac wants to know the relationship between the dollar and the euro against the commodities market. The euro and the sterling. If I, if, if, if I, yeah, sterling, yeah. If, if I got that right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, um, I don't blame you because it's a bit of an unusual play there. But, um, well, basically, the, the two are very different. Uh, these two currencies or these two um, groups are driven by uh, quite different uh, issues. Um, well, apart from the risk aversion or risk appetite theme, um, the Aussie and Kiwi and, and the Canadian dollars commodity currencies are driven by growth stories. Um, you know, how much uh, you bet that the world economy is um, recovering, whereas the euro and the sterling is very much driven by how much you think the central bank is printing money. <laughs> so, uh, if you think, yeah. <laughs> so if you think that these, um, uh, both actually the, uh, the euro and the sterling have recovered quite a bit already um, in, the, in the past uh, couple of weeks, especially the sterling. Basically, uh, they're seeing the signs of uh, recovery in the U.S., uh, sorry, the U.K. housing uh, sector, and they, I think that uh, because of that, uh, the Bank of England might actually uh, ease up on on the cash printing machine. Whereas on the euro, um, on the contrary, they say a lot of people think that the ECB is still behind the curve, um, and they think that. Uh, uh, the ECB will have to, 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 to go a little bit more in terms of uh, stepping up the cash printing machine. And that's why we actually see that the euro has, uh, has uh, dropped quite a bit against uh, the can candy and the, and the Australian and the Kiwi dollar as well. Whereas uh, uh, for the, the, this cross for the sterling is actually a bit on the flat side. Yeah. Hey, Frank is getting really worried. He says the Kiwi has not moved in three days. <laughs> three days? Okay. <laughs> We're looking at a very short-term trader here, intraday trader. Uh, on the contrary, the Kiwi has actually uh, rebounded this morning. Um, the Kiwi is actually among the, 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 the three commodity currencies. It's actually the weakest of all, actually, uh, simply because uh, New Zealand actually exports soft commodities and uh, dairy is one of the, 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 main, the main exports. Um, and so it's actually got, gotten quite a bit of a pressure because of uh, what the U.S. were doing for the dairy exporters on their side. But is um, there more than meets the eyes and just uh, about milk? Yes. Uh, no, no. Uh, well, it's not just about milk now. <laughs> we have the uh, RBNZ rate meeting tomorrow and uh, there are expectations that the RBNs that might actually keep interest rates unchanged, and that is why the Kiwi dollar is actually stronger this morning. Okay, Hong Kong dollar. Oh yes, okay. Uh, we have this this question about the Hong Kong dollar. Uh, well, Hong Kong dollar is basically a pact against the U.S. dollar. So basically, uh, I would think that uh, you know how you would think about how do you think you trade on the Hong Kong dollar is actually basically how you think the U.S. dollar would trade. And given that the uh, risk uh, appetite is back. And people think that the funding concerns for the dollar is is continued to abate. Uh, basically, the Hong Kong dollar is expected to weaken as well. The Hong Kong dollar has traded on a very strong end of the band at 7.75 for the last few weeks, a uh, few months actually. And the HKMA has come in to stepped in quite a bit to to uh, to defend the the, the peg. Uh, now the, the the question of the peg is not so much will will it de peg? You know, uh, traders are telling me that's not going to be the theme in the maybe in the in the medium to long term. It's about whether they would change the peg to, to, to that uh, against the yuan rather than the U.S. dollar. That's going to be more of a theme uh, as we go further out. What's the sense in the market when it comes to that? Um, they're, they're saying that uh, it could actually come sooner than expected uh, simply because uh, a lot of traders are seeing signs that uh, PBOC is stepping up to the yuan's uh, ability, uh, you know, the yuan's uh, availability in Hong Kong from, from deposits to clearing of accounts. And, and they're saying that these are actually measures which uh, the Chinese authorities are putting in place to allow more convertibility of the yuan and one of the the main current one of the first currencies that's actually going to be trading uh, on this is going to be the Hong Kong okay every single show we get questions on the Aussie and you know our chart of today shows that the Aussie may be at 70 US cents uh, yes I saw that chart too <laughs> um, well I uh I'm not sure where the, 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 the basis of the chart comes from, uh, but the traders I'm speaking to says that uh, most, most of them felt that any pullback in the Australian uh, dollar is going to be limited to about 78 or 79 cents uh, to the US dollar. They're still banging on the, on the growth story, and as we continue to see more signs of stabilization in the, in the, in the world economy, um, they're saying that the Australian dollar could pick up uh, you know, uh, at least a bill of floor at 78 or 79. But what time frame are we looking at? I mean... Um, no, they're, they're saying that the for it to actually uh, the, the the catalyst to actually go past uh, 83 cents to the dollar will actually be uh, it will take a lot stronger data. But they are looking at con consolidation around 80 cents for at least for the next um, uh, couple of months. Rich Louis, it's a wrap. The trade back in two.